So guys, I'm here with lobster and all. Luke Black from Serbia. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Does the lobster have a name? Yes, his name is Salvador. It's 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 based off the Salvador Dali, and uh, this is based off his lobster phone. So I decided to name him Salvador. Salvador, lovely yeah. name. Hello, Salvador. Nice to see you. <laughs> so. In a way, welcome home. This is all of your home. <laughs> You're back in where you live now. Okay. Yeah, it's been a, a month or two since I've been like working really hard in Serbia to like prepare for this stage. I'm here only for a couple of days because like loads of hot work uh, like waits for me at home. But um, but I can't wait to come back. I have my own peace here. I have my friends. I have my favorite places. Um, so yeah. What, what are some of your favorite places then in London? Some of your things my, you like to do? My favorite area would be Upper Street in Angel and Highbury and Islington and the, and the Highbury fields, like the park and everything. Like, I don't know why I love it, but I love it. It's perfect. So since, you've, uh, since you won your national final, have you had to go to Serbia for the majority of work and the preparation for Liverpool? I did, because um, the whole, the entire delegation is there. Loads of the stuff, the new staging and everything is being done in England. So, you know, I had to be a bit back and forth, but like, uh, we, we do have a really hard hard work waiting for us now, 15 days before we depart to Liverpool. It's so. only 15 days till you're coming back here. Well, not yeah. here, but England. Yeah, 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 yeah. That time flies, doesn't it? I know, I know. How are you feeling about the whole thing? Are you excited, nervous, all of the above? I mean, uh, one thing at the time, tonight we have the London pre-party and I'll be nervous for that. And then once that's done, I'll be nervous for for Eurovision. <laughs> oh, don't be nervous, you're going to be amazing. I wanted to ask, to be fair, because I saw in an interview you did before even you won your national final, you said that when you submitted your song, uh, your entry, that you didn't think uh, you would be one of the stand-up people, you thought you'd just be one of those people that just submit a song and is, you know, one of the 36. Did you literally have that, surely you had a, must have had a bit more confidence of like, this is a good song and like, it's going to be loved. But the whole thing is I have, a conf I have confidence that it's a good song and that uh, in my staging and my friends who helped me make it, but I didn't know that Serbian people, <coughs> sorry, that Serbian people will like it, and also that maybe Eurovision people will like it because, like, maybe you know, I bring a little bit of alternative dark stuff to it. So I don't know. I, I just went completely intuitively into it, and it worked out, and I'm. I'm happy. It almost your song almost embodies the idea that any song, any style in, in Eurovision can work. Would you say? Yeah, I would love to see like. Uh, well, it's happening right now because like usually you would like have like really happy songs in Eurovision or like a really heartbreaking ballad, but now it's more like there's so much more concept which I really enjoy, and uh, you know I'm now even the bigger fan of Eurovision. So yeah. Of course, the diversity is amazing. Yeah. And a lot of uh, your performance and the song itself was inspired by video games. Uh, that you yes. did. Please tell us some of your favorites. My favorite video game, um, well, my first favorite video game was uh, Tomb Raider Lara Croft. And I played that from 96 onwards. Um, my all time favorite game is Last of Us Part 2. Um, that was my uh, anti anxiety medication which is every time I would feel overwhelmed during the pandemic or even after that, I would really, really play that game and it would calm me down to kill zombies. And uh, my favorite multiplayer game is Fortnite. So I really hope I get <laughs> a skin in Fortnite one day when I'm worthy of it. <laughs> you must, after Eurovision, they'll be like contacting them up. How many, do you know roughly how many wins you got on Fortnite or is it just too many to count? I win, but mostly because on the strength of playing with my friends nice so I don't <laughs> same here yeah I don't really I don't really have lo loads of solo wins um, but there's a nice feature now they removed the builds so yes. I really enjoy it a lot more I think uh, you could count the amount of wins I got on Fortnite in about one hand and you've have fingers to spare <laughs> I'm not oh, no, I mean <laughs> no I did have a loads but like let's be modest <laughs> let's be modest and you mentioned Last of Us you must have been watching the show uh, since it's been coming out I did I did watch the entire show I uh, um, I'm more of a fan of the video game, but um, I'm also a fan of loads of episodes that weren't in the game that explain the characters a bit more. So I'm kind of like, I would love to play the game again now, once I have the time, and then watch an episode, and then 
play again and then you know like I would know how to exactly position every episode within the game there's always breaks in between sound checks in Liverpool that's <laughs> there's your free time sorted there oh, I, I'm pretty sure they'll fill that up they'll fill that <laughs> let's always be optimistic Luke let's it's always now. be optimistic no. so I wanted to ask actually so you went to university right uh, here you graduated yeah a few months ago I believe wasn't it uh, yeah uh, uh, we, I graduated. No, I, 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 I graduated last year. Uh, yeah. At the end of last year. End of last year. The yeah. master's degree, and you know, I met loads of the people that I work with right now on my on my university. So I'm really happy that I actually went to school here. It was really life changing. Yeah, because one of the people uh, I saw um, your graduation pictures. One of the people you actually graduated with also took part in a national final themselves. Martha, Martha May from Croatia, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah. Have you, have you spoken to her about the whole experience and wish you, wish you any advice? Good luck. We hung out last night till late hours, so yeah. <laughs> no, she's a really close friend. And I, I really, you know, I really vouched for her as well um, in Croatia. But, you know, she's she's done an amazing job. She looked like a Disney princess and she I did, really yeah. loved it. Yeah. Oh, she, I'm sure she'll be back for Dora trying again. She. Oh, were you both Eurovision fans since long before, or was it just something that came up recently? She's more of a Eurovision fan. She'll come to the pre-party tonight. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like, we, we've invited her. Oh, wow. But she's like such a hardcore Eurovision fan. Unlike me, I just like, you know, probably like the majority of the people that will watch my performance for the first time on Eurovision. That's me. That's I, I fall in that category. <laughs> I watch Eurovision, but nothing before that. There were loads of people like, oh my gosh, this Luke Black guy. <laughs> All this stuff. I tell you what, though, obviously various other Eurovision fans would have seen your performances at pre-parties, one of them being in Madrid. And you had a bit of a highlight with someone handing you that lobster that is fairly well known in the community, Constructor. What's it been like speaking to her? Has she given you any advice about the whole process or any <laughs> tips? Well, I mean, she's one of my best friends. So, like, we go really way back. I think, <laughs> yes. Or... Or let's, let's it, what's the young way of showing the heart? Is it this way or is it this way? Oh, I'm useless with trends, don't ask you me. Don't know? <laughs> is it this way? No, the, the young, oh yeah, okay, I'm doing it right. Oh, this, this is the best one. Like um, that, yeah. I, I feel like, um, I feel like she really helped me out uh, with uh, making me apply for the competition. Okay. And like, you know, like she, she had loads of um, good advice to me to just enjoy it because like it passes by so quickly and you don't even realize how much fun you had. Yeah, of course. And you were part of her performance in Madrid as well, weren't yeah. you? How was that to be part of the Constructiverse? <laughs> you know, that was the best thing ever because um, I, uh, she handed me the lobster, which in in certain way, like she, you know, like handed me something from last Eurovision to this Eurovision. Passing of the torch. Passing of the torch, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. And then I was um, on her performance uh, because, well, obviously she couldn't get her entire team as as I couldn't as yeah. well. But, you know, it was life-changing, really, because like, I felt the energy that she probably felt in Turin and like with people clapping and, and cheering on and I was really, really happy to be the priest in her performance. Yes, of course. If you could match her position as well, that would be a great thing for her to pass on to, wouldn't it? Yeah. We're, as you said, you're back here in about 15 days. Eurovision's coming around thick and fast. Do you have any message to your fans in Serbia, around the world, or just before the contest, the last one? I just really want to thank everybody and Eurovox as well for, for all the support and uh, for all the amazing interviews and for preparing me for more more interviews to come actually um, and I really want to thank everybody who is listening to the song and, and understanding it and you know relating to it and I really wish it gives you a really big hug as much as you know the audience has given me a big hug thank you Luke Black thank you so much it's been an thank absolute you. pleasure thank to speak so much, to you sir. it's been thank amazing you.